Hey guys, Mohan Poberry here with another video and this one is all about one thing you really want to make sure you have when you go and buy a business. So hey, welcome to another video. This channel guys is all about how to buy businesses, grow businesses, how to ideally buy businesses that already have existing management team in place or where you find enough businesses with enough cash flow where you can find someone else to run the day to day for you. And it's also great, you know, people ask me, hey, if I have existing business, is the, are those things can still work for me? And I'd say, absolutely, yes. Growing by acquisitions, by buying other businesses is the best way to grow a business. It's like you can grow by years worth of revenues in an afternoon by buying another business. I mean, that's, that's the way that the biggest companies out there grow. Uh, if you look at face, Facebook or Google, that's what they do. They go out there and buy other businesses because that's the fastest way to grow. You can't meet your shareholder demands if you only grow internally. I mean, yes, you can grow by doing more sales and more marketing, but it's nothing to compare where you can just go buy a business that's already existing for a while, already have their list of clients, their list of um, basically services that they provide and just bring them to your existing business. It's the best thing you can do to yourself. So if you have existing business, still use those things. I mean, it's, it's amazing to go out there and try to buy another one. And, and if you don't have a business, then yeah, go, go in and start try to buy your first one. I think it's, it's the best industry to be involved with, especially if you like to be in, involved in many different things at the same time. And just the art of the deal, I think it's what's really, really cool about this place. It's about being a person who's mostly responsible on, on the, I guess, big vision side of things and just on, on setting goals for your businesses and not being the person involved in the day-to-day -day menial things. So as, as after we have that, again, I, I more want to talk about something very specific in the space of buying businesses. So I'm assuming you kind of like watch my other videos, you understand that you need to go out there, build yourself some kind of a deal flow, get in, in touch with business owners, building rapport, getting financial, sending offers. And now I want to show you and talk about something really important in this space of buying businesses. So one of the things I want to focus on is, let's say we're about to buy a business, we're getting to a point where we agree on the terms and price and all that. One of the key things you want to pay attention to is the amount of working capital that you're going to have as soon as you buy the business. The thing is, when you look to buy a business, you want to make sure that there's enough working capital to trade that business. Otherwise, you can get to a point where you buy a business, you expected an amount that you need to raise in order to buy the business, but you, you come to a point where you can buy a business and there's no working capital to trade the business. So what do you need to do in that case? You'll need to bring more capital from home or more capital from investors. And you don't want to get to a point where you understand that you need more capital only after you own the business, right? So the amount of working capital in the business need to be agreed on as soon as you start your negotiation. So when you get into the LOI phase, the letter of intent, one of the things you want to put into the agreement is the amount of working capital that you expect to see in the business as soon as you become the owner. Because in the end of the day, if you don't have enough working capital in the business when you own it, there's only so many months that you can continue to trade that business. You'll need to bring in capital. The biggest reason that businesses shut down is because they don't have cash. They, they have lack of cash. So you need to really pay attention to those things when you buy the business. Remember, it's, it's, it's a long process to go out there, build deal flow, start to negotiate deals. And, and when you get to a point where you actually buy the business, you spend so much time to get to that stage. You want to make sure that you have enough capital to trade that business and ideally even enough capital to expand it and grow it. So it's so important that you focus on those things before you even look to buy that business. You want to make sure that there's an amount that you need to understand that you that, that amount can be enough for me to sustain the business and ideally even grow it. Now, obviously, the amount of working capital that you need in each business is different. Obviously, it depends on the industry, it depends on, on the size of business, of course. I'd say a good rule of thumb to go with is one tenth of the yearly revenues as a working capital to have in the business at least. You want that number and that number can at least sustain to trade the day to day of the business. Now, the reason you need to pay attention to this is because, as you know, on a balance sheet of a business, you have different type of assets. You have equipment or, or buildings or things that many times the value of those things don't really change between the time you're making an offer on a business and the time that you own the business. However, things like working capital and accounts receivables and inventory compared to equipment, those numbers can change uh, literally within a matter of weeks or months. That's why when you finalize your deal terms, you want to make sure you've specified the exact amount of numbers that you expect to see in each of those assets. And again, I'm assuming that you're doing a stock sale here in this, 
in this thing. Uh, and even if you're doing an asset purchase, you want to make sure that you know what kind of assets you're buying and you specify the exact numbers. Because if you agree on a term on a deal with uh, X amount of working capital or receivables, you don't want the number to be very, very different at closing. Otherwise, the valuation of the business is just going to be very different. So what you want to have in your agreements, some kind of an adjustment to the price if you see differences in those amounts of those different assets, especially things like working capital, accounts receivables, and stuff that you really, really need in order to trade the day to day. And yeah, again, remember, it's really, really important for us to have those things because if you don't have enough working capital, if you don't have cash to work with, you have no business. It's going to be it's going to take only very few short months before you have no business if you have no capital to play with right so you want to make sure you have that you work so hard to buy that business you don't want to get to a point where you are now the owner of the business and you know you have no capital to trade the day to day and you need to bring in capital from home or inject more capital and raise more capital from investors and then many times just be diluted and, and left be left with uh, less equity so it's not worth it right you want to make sure you specify those things you want to make sure that in your negotiation you're setting those expectations and ideally when you talk to those owners you want to understand what's the ideal amount for working capital to trade the day to day and you want to set that amount at closing when you buy the business you want to see those numbers on the balance sheet so yeah, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Really pay attention to those things. It's really, really important. And yeah, subscribe if you didn't yet. Like this video, help me grow the channel, share with your friends and see the links in the description below. Get in touch, join our group on Facebook, um, fill your uh, questions in the survey below and let me know what ideas you have for me to create more videos. I wanna keep uh, a literally post almost daily, so I need more ideas and more topics. I'm here to share, I'm here to document my journey and, and help as much as I can and make it win-win for everyone. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.